and after all these years, you know, I'm always in the office and always in, had a chance to play a ton of games on Thanksgiving Day. Those are always fun. Had a, ton, had a chance to play several games on Christmas Day. Those are always fun. But it also is important, you know, that we, uh, and Hugh does a great job of this here, and wherever I've been, I think maybe I've done a good job about the family of the team, the second family of the team, and what we do to make sure that all that's done correctly and we get our job done. And, uh, but then they give thanks. And uh, I think our guys did a pretty good job of that yesterday. And I've been really pleased with them again. You know, I thought last week was, you know, improved in so many ways. And then, uh, you know, we still have room for improvement, you know, in our last six as we continue to press on. Um, young is not an excuse, but it's been fun to see some of the newcomers have reflections or recognitions of things we talked about back in August that all of a sudden makes sense. And the more we continue to do those type of things, you know, the better they'll perform. And there's not one guy in the room that I have right now that I don't like being around. And uh, those guys give everything they've got every day. And uh, I've got to do everything I can to help them continue to improve. Questions? Okay, it's just like last week. This is great, though. How has your defense improved since giving up those four touchdown passes against Cincinnati? In the well, you know, it, it, there, it's really when, when it's been fun, this is the first time this year that they get a chance to go the same year against the same opponent. You know, what might be normal for me, you know, for some of these guys, it's the first time. Even in college, it didn't happen, you know, that kind of stuff. So it would be good for you to ask them that. And as we have talked all week long, that's the reflections, that's the recognitions of things that they say, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I saw it that way, you know, and, and that's refreshing in that respect because it doesn't make any difference how I see it. It's how they see it during the heat of battle because they didn't do it wrong on purpose, they saw it incorrectly. And it takes some time that way. And when you are new to the league, it even takes more time that way. So yeah, they've had that pounded down through them. And you know, this is also the first time in a practice setting to where they have plays that are in the carded plays of what was done last time. And so they see and recce some of them have done it even today. I was really, really uh, pleased today with some of the recognition factors of what was going to come before the play took place. And they, they didn't know. They, you know. I don't show them that before they go out there. You know, they had, had it figured out because they see it. So that was a good question and, and hopefully you know, we've got to make those corrections. You can't have those things. You know, even last week, as dominant as they were in so many ways defensively, you know, the two runs were incorrectly forced. I didn't say gap fit, forced. And the one pass was incorrectly techniqued and aligned. And why? You know, there's only, that coach, that's only three times. I don't care if it's one time. Why? And then the fact that, you know, be it special teams and defense, we caused five fumbles. Only one of them was recovered. Why? And those, they get that. They see that. And I've been pretty hard on that this week. He was just saying that he needs Miles. You guys need Miles to dominate over the last six games and make more splash plays. Um, and I know he's played well and mm -hmm. in and out, but um, why do you think he can, hasn't quite had maybe the answer? First off, it's time on task. And then second time right now is, is that the college game and the NFL game schematically is way different. And when you are a – or it, when you are perceived to be premier, when you're perceived and respected as talented – then you don't let one guy handle one guy. 
you let two or three. So watch and see how many times the protections are slid to him, maxed to him, to where he's not just playing against one guy. He's playing against what we call chippers, and he's playing against not only a chipper, but another one that was slid towards him to end up being three-on-one developed into two-on-one. Those are things you have to grow to. Those are things that, and again, um, we get better on when I help him with some calls about he disappears from that spot and he's not in that spot some of the times that they think he's in that spot. It'll be the same way this week. You know, it, we'll see. And when you say he's not in that spot, well, you know, there is some type of a stunt game, angle difference, alignment difference, that all of a sudden they came out of the huddle thinking he was there. You know, he's getting more comfortable with that. But I am also very cognizant of not filling his head so much that he slows down and I don't want him to do that. And health, each week, they all have bumps and bruises, but he's getting healthier and healthier and healthier and healthier. He'll be fine, you know, and he'll be fine. And it's not only him, you know, hey, you, you, throw out another name. Who, who else? Kirksey? Schobert? Carl? I mean, oh, Emmanuel's not here. I'm just kidding you. But, I mean, hey, it's not just him. And it doesn't, you know, to the point of I understand – where he was drafted. I understand what that means, okay? But so does everybody else on how they decide to play the game against him. How tough is it to see Emmanuel go, go down for the season? Uh, you know, I think it was, was it the last time we talked? I can't remember when I was bragging about how well he'd done, you know, and I couldn't remember what, you know, I have CTE too, so I don't know how long it is. Is that a uh, – but he played so well. And – yeah, I, and again, one more time, just like we talked about Jamie, I care about him, you know, because he was moving in such a great place. And right, wrong, or indifferent, he's not a linebacker. He was asked to do that. You know, he's not, you know, and so he's a defensive end. And remember back early, maybe in August or whatever, were you questioning why I was playing him there, okay? And he's a defensive end. Had I drafted him, that's where I would have played him anyway. I liked him coming out at that spot and didn't get a chance to take him, you know, at the, at the last place where I was at. So you got to get back into it, continue to uh, grow, and not uh, take time off right now. He's going to take time off in the surgery and the rehabilitation process, but from the mind process and the mental process, keep growing. And, again, the mind doesn't know when you're actually doing it or visualizing it. And he's got to keep growing in that way and, you know, turn Jamie into a coach, Collins, and turn him into a coach. And, you know, players know a lot more than coaches. they got to dumb down to be a coach. So now they got to dumb down to come over and do what, what we're doing. Greg, on the, uh, the long run by Cornette in the game, the 29-yard run, mm -hmm. it looked like uh, Peppers uh, took a bad angle and he ended up overrunning the play and didn't even make the tackle. What it was was it never should have got to Peppers. Ball never should have been out the gate, never should have been there. It wasn't Peppers' responsibility. You know, Peppers was a deep half fill player, and basically what he is is a secondary support player in that. There's nine guys in the box playing that run, two more than they can block. So it got out. Now, once it gets there, and he's gotten better and better and better and better at making those space plays. But one of the things that – and I love the fact that I have to do this with him. I'd rather do this than the other way. I have to pull him back on shooting his gun too fast and too hard. Okay? And as, as instead of when a guy is not real tough and you're trying to get him to hit somebody, that's hard, you know. And that's, those are the ones we need to cut. But when they're doing that, I take you, I don't know, I wasn't with you, you guys at this time, but if you can remember, if you ever had a chance to see a kid, and I'm going to call him by name, he's going to smile because of all the times I was on his rear end is Rodney McLeod. And Rodney McLeod couldn't tackle you, Tony, in space. But, you know, the last year I got a chance to coach him, he made 12 
open field touchdown saving tackles in the season. You'll be able to get there. But it's time on task and you know, and he he did what he believed was correct. And he's the first one to say, you know, his recognition, he's a very, very intelligent young man. His recognition was <coughs> You know, and he was he was irritated with himself, and he couldn't wait to get to the sideline later on to tell me that you know he knew what I was going to say before I say it. You got something good there. We just got to continue to build on it. Question about Andy Dalton. Uh, what are the characteristics that, that make him challenging to prepare for? Each year that a quarterback that has had success in the league grows and becomes more like a coach than a player, and when you get a quarterback to be a coach and a player, you got something. And the familiarity, you know, I say that because it brought a smile on my face watching, you know, I got a chance to see part of the game yesterday with Phillip Rivers. <laughs> you guys have no idea how hard that guy studies and listens to every TV copy, listens to every interview. I'm sure he's listening to this interview today to see what I'm saying just so he takes it into the ball game and knows more than coaches know. And predicts and sees things and changes protections and changes this and changes that. Um, Andy has come a long way um, since he's come into the league and coming from TCU to the league. And I knew his coaches really well at TCU too. At that time, there was a guy down there that was on the defensive side of the ball that I had coached a long time ago in college ball. And uh, he's risen his way up to the rank. So I see him growing each time, each year, and knowing more just football. And then can you and can we defensively upset the timing or upset the recognition that he has or he thinks he has before the play? And those are the things that are difficult to do when you're playing more veteran quarterbacks. Sure, you've asked about the red zone. Um, do you think you guys have made improvements in that area? In that we, we have, but you know what? We've, we've made so much, and that would be another thing to, to talk to the guys about, just, just to how we meet and practice and a lot of things here. You know, the irritating thing last week was letting that play get down there to start with. The third down was incorrect that allowed it to go right immediately to first down, and then defensively, everybody, 10 guys, just absolutely perfect on what that is, and one guy messed up, looked at the wrong thing, and Mercedes Lewis, which I had a chance to be around him and coach him many years ago when he first started in the league and when I was at Jacksonville, became free. Uh, a play we'd love to have back, and we can't continue to have those kinds of mistakes. But just like what I said about Jabril, you know, DK immediately when he came off the field knew exactly before and – you know, and I got to I got to continue to trust them, and uh, we'll play. Last week we played really good red zone defense, and we didn't let them down there. Okay, and we got to play better on third down, and play better when we're here. And I know from the game relationships that are going on out there in practice, and we're getting really good looks and help from our offense on, you know, how we picture plays. They're light years better out there, but we got to take it to Sunday. Made that play or yeah, it's the play, play fake, fake, but not only the play fake, Tony, it, uh, did you see what Mercedes did on that? <sighs> yeah. I mean, how long he faked blocking. That is another really, really good ve uh, veteran. But we have a call built in to take that away, even though how long Mercedes is, and we just, we just didn't do it. And those are things, again – they keep on. I tell them all the time. You got a tool in your toolbox. You just got to know what time to use the tool, okay? And and give Mercedes credit. That doesn't happen. Most people, you know, I, I think about our young tight ends here too. You know, you tell them to do that. They go, mm -mm. you know, the game's going so fast it hit. He's played for so long. He sold it. He sold it. He was even into the third count, selling it, and then go. Now that also tells you the protection was pretty good because we were playing run instead of pass. Up, excuse me, up front before that happened. And uh, we just got to do a better job with that. that was a, it was a good play call, but executed very well by Mercedes.